Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV. We're in the detail center at Trailblazer, and we're going to take you through a new RV orientation on this 2015 Grand Design Reflection 313 RLPS. We'll start right here at the front of the trailer, where you've got your propane and battery systems. Uh, to access your propane valves, you can open up the uh, cover of the tanks, or you can remove the whole cover to access the tanks themselves. Here you've got dual 30 pound propane tanks, both of these are full right now, and an automatic switch over propane regulator. So you can see right now, the regulator is pointing at this for the supply bottle, that makes this the reserve bottle. Um, as long as the regulator is pointed at one, one or the other of the bottles, uh, you can open both valves on your propane bottles and the regulator will deplete one bottle first. Once this is empty, it'll switch over and start to pull propane from the second bottle. When that switch over happens, this little sight glass on the front will change from green to red, so you'll know your first bottle is empty. At that time, you can switch the regulator over to the other bottle, remove the first bottle to go and refill it without shutting down your propane system. Behind your propane bottles is where you'll find your battery. Come on. She's a little difficult to get at in there. Uh, the uh, battery is a 12-volt uh, deep cycle RV marine battery uh, with, with uh, four leads going to it, uh, black and white to the negative terminal, and red and white with a red uh, tracer, uh, or white, white and red wire to the positive terminal. I always recommend with the battery on an RV, that you remove it over the winter for winter storage. Um, store it inside somewhere where it uh, won't freeze and if possible, uh, put a good charge on the battery sometime over the course of the off season. This one has a solar charge uh, uh, input here. If you have a portable solar power or solar panel, you can plug into there to charge the batteries directly. Here at the front storage compartment is where you'll find your water uh, system control. Uh, so with this style of water system, uh, you'll fill your fresh tank from the pressurized city water connection. Uh, so you can hook your water hose right up to here, and then you've got a fill valve. Uh, so in the normal uh, position, your um, uh, you're pumping water from your fresh tank with the water pump. You can turn that valve to uh, city fill tank to use this uh, inlet to pressure fill your fresh, hold, fresh water holding tank. Or you can turn this to fixtures only to uh, pressure, pressurize the water lines in the RV. There's also a sanitized winterize uh, setting there uh, for uh, uh, pumping antifreeze through your water lines. For now, I'm going to leave this valve in the normal position. This is your water heater bypass valve. So right now it's in the normal uh, summer position to bypass the water heater, turn it to the bypass position. There is a little uh, map of valve pos positions here. Um, that uh, is a good idea to uh, get a picture of or screenshot this video uh, so that you uh, know the positioning of your valves for your various uh, water uh, system operations. Um, also in here is where you'll hook up satellite and uh, cable TV uh, and you have your uh, black and gray holding tank dump valves from here as well. So the sewer hose itself will attach towards the back. I'll show you that when we get there. But anytime you dump your, hold, your RV holding tanks, you'll always want to dump the black valve first. And then once that's finished dumping, close this and dump the gray valve. 
that'll use your gray water to uh, flush the contents through the sewer hose so that there's nothing left in that hose when you have to remove it. Also got your little outside shower here, uh, so hot and cold taps. The uh, shower head uh, extends right out from the trailer. Um, and you've got a uh, auxiliary switch for your water pump here as well. So you can uh, uh, activate your water pump right from there. I will go ahead and turn off this outside shower. Um, the other uh, hose connection that you have in here is for your uh, for your sewer tank flush. Uh, so don't confuse this connection with this connection. Um, the sewer tank flush uh, you'll use when you're dumping your holding tanks when you've got that black holding tank valve open. Um, you can uh, hook a hose up to here and it'll spray out the inside of that holding tank. Spray off the monitor probes in the tank and keep that monitor panel reading accurately. You've got four corner stabilizer jacks on the RV. The power stabilizers. So they just extend like so. One side first, once that's down, the other side will equalize. With the stabilizer jacks, you want to get them nice and snug to the ground, uh, but they're not intended to lift the RV, so you won't be able to actually take up the entire weight of the RV. Once they're snug with the ground, uh, they just kind of stop, and that'll add some stability to the RV. Around here, you'll find your hot water tank. Um, so this is an Atwood hot water tank. Uh, this style of tank doesn't require an anode, uh, an anode rod. Uh, so the uh, plug to drain the tank uh, is right here in the, in the corner. Uh, it's just a simple uh, plastic plug, no anode rod on the end of that. Before you pull that plug out, make sure to uh, use the pressure relief valve uh, to uh, bleed any pressure off of the water tank, uh, just so that you don't get sprayed when you remove that plug. A um, couple of vents here. Um, this is your furnace vent. So there is some access to the back of the furnace for repair or maintenance work, uh, but mostly just a vent. Important to note that it does get very hot. So if you've got kids around the trailer, just make sure they know to stay clear of that. And with this, uh, also a vent with some access for cleaning or maintenance work to the back of your fridge. Um, you can uh, remove this cover to get in there if you need to, but it's pretty rare that you'd have to. Uh, it's mostly there uh, just for uh, airflow. Right here is where you'll hook up that sewer hose. Um, we supply a new 20 foot uh, medium heavy duty sewer hose with the RV. So when you go to hook up the sewer hose, uh, hooks right under here, other end goes into the ground. Remember your sewer tank dump valves are up at the front in this front storage compartment. Sewer tank storage is right here. So you can see your new sewer hose stored inside the, uh, the storage area. Uh, important to note that you've got two gray holding tanks on this trailer. You've got a uh, uh, gray tank uh, specific to your bathroom and you've got a gray tank here specific to your kitchen. Uh, only one uh, sewer hose uh, hookup, but you will have to dump both gray valves uh, when you're dumping your holding tanks. Don't forget about this one. Your tires are inflated to 80 PSI, stamped on the sidewall of the tire 80 PSI cold, and we do recommend running them right at 80 PSI. We've also uh, torqued your wheel nuts to 100 foot-pounds. We recommend periodic retorquing of wheel nuts on a towable RV, uh, and also periodic uh, repacking of wheel, be uh, wheel bearings. This one has the uh, removable center cap to access the easy lube axles. Uh, so there, if you pop this center cap out of here, uh, it'll expose a greaser. And you can use a grease gun to grease your inner and outer wheel bearings. Uh, now that doesn't 
eliminate the need to repack the wheel bearings, but it does prolong the intervals. So instead of repacking wheel bearings every year, uh, maybe uh, uh, every two or three years. Switch for your uh, power rear stabilizers. This trailer has a hitch uh, on the back. Uh, primarily that would be for a cargo uh, carrier or bike rack. Uh, it's not, not uh, permitted in Alberta to tow another trailer behind a uh, ball, uh, ball uh, hitch trailer. Ladder on the back. Uh, we do recommend uh, getting up on that roof a couple of times a year just to visually inspect your roof seals and make sure that you haven't torn the rubber roof membrane and, and uh, identify any areas where there may be uh, future uh, water leaks. And your step, the new aluminum steps, they uh, uh, fold and then roll. Uh, so same thing when you go to pull it out, roll and then fold. Just inside the entry door is where you'll find your control panel and one of the main uh, things that you'll find in your control panel is your awning switch. So to extend the awning just press and hold the awning extend button and the awning will extend a full 8 feet. has an automatic rain dump feature, but as you can see, it's already uh, pitched uh, down quite a bit, so uh, unlikely that any water will ever sit in there. If you want to control uh, the direction that the water drains off the awning, uh, these arms are adjustable. So you can pull this, uh, this arm down. They're actually both adjustable, but you can uh, lower one side to control where the awning uh, drains the water. When you bring that awning back in, you'll want to put both of those arms back up to the full height to ensure that the canvas rolls up straight on the roller tube. Now come on inside and I'll show you a few things on the inside of the trailer. Um, starting with your ceiling lights. Uh, here on your control panel you've got some light switches uh, for your ceiling lights and your step light. Uh, you've also got uh, activation for your water pump and uh, water heater on either uh, propane gas or 110 volt electricity. Uh, you'll also find in here your slide switches. We've already run two of the three slides out, uh, but we left uh, the uh, kitchen slide uh, just for demonstration. So when you uh, go to run the slides out, just press and hold the out button. This is an LCI Schwintech style slide, so it drives from all four corners and uses two motors. With this style of slide, you'll want to make sure and run it all the way out uh, or all the way in. Avoid stopping it halfway just to make sure that those uh, motors don't go out of sync. Uh, the main slide, the big slide, is an electric rack and pinion style slide. So if you do need to uh, access something at the back of the RV while you're traveling, it's perfectly fine to run this one out a few inches and bring it back in. But the LCI Schwintex style slides, your kitchen and bedroom slide, uh, we recommend running them all the way out or all the way in rather than stopping them halfway. Also here at the control panel is where you'll find your monitor panel. So you can see that your battery is uh, two thirds charged right now. Fresh tank completely empty, black tank uh, showing one third full. It is empty, but it probably has just a little bit of uh, goop built up on the probes, show, so it's showing still a third. It's trying to go to empty. Um, and your both your gray tanks are empty as well. Um, the 
other uh, things that you've got on this control panel, uh, just your exterior awning light. Uh, so that is a light that runs the entire length of the awning. Right next to that is where you have your heating and cooling system. Um, so a pretty simple control uh, with the on off switch there. And then you can toggle uh, the mode between heating and cooling. Um, right now we're in heating mode and set to 24 degrees. Uh, so the furnace uh, is calling for heat. You hear that furnace fan come on immediately. After about 15 seconds, you hear the direct spark ignition as the burner lights up. Um, so now, once the uh, RV comes to temperature, we'll see exactly the opposite happen. The burner goes out immediately, uh, but the fan's still going to run for 30 seconds to a minute just to go through its cycle. Um, you also have... Um, for your uh, cooling system, your air conditioning uh, system, you have a timer um, and you have the ability to run just the fan as well uh, without running the uh, air conditioner itself. If you're plugged into just a, uh, a 15 amp uh, service instead of a 30 or 50 amp, you may uh, opt to just run the fan rather than the air conditioner itself. You do need to be plugged into power uh, to operate that air conditioner or the air conditioner fan. Um, to shut the system off, and just shut it off, uh, the uh, furnace fan is still going to go through its cycle before it shuts down completely. Your fridge is the 8 cubic foot Atwood Helium fridge. Um, so uh, a couple of things to show you there. Um, you can toggle this, uh, this fridge uh, between automatic, there we're on automatic, gas, um, we're and we're not plugged into power. So uh, you, can, you can toggle the uh, fridge between automatic, gas, and AC power. Um, what we recommend is just always leaving the fridge in automatic. Uh, as long as it's in automatic, if it has electricity available, it'll always run on that. But if it loses power, uh, if you blow a breaker or the trailer gets unplugged or something, it'll sense that and it'll automatically switch over to gas. Uh, so for now, I'll just put that uh, back in the automatic setting. There is also a temperature uh, control here. One being the warmest, five being the coldest. And I'm just going to set it on three for now. But you may find you need to uh, you need to adjust that as you uh, as you go. So, and uh, that's going to need to cool down before it shows the uh, the accurate temperature. Uh, to shut the fridge off, just press and hold the on button uh, for three seconds. Here at your stove top, uh, three burner gas stove top, um, and all three of those burners light with the uh, piezo sparker. Uh, always recommend that. After you change a propane bottle uh, or have your propane system disconnected for anything, uh, come here and just open up these three uh, gas valves and light all three burners. Once you've lit all three burners, you know you've bled the air off of the propane system and you'll have no problem uh, getting your fridge, um, furnace, and hot water tank lit as well. The only pilot light in the RV is here at the uh, oven. Uh, so you'll turn the oven knob over to pilot, push in on that knob, and then you'll light your pilot uh, right down here at the pilot assembly. Um, this one does not use the piezo sparker to light the oven pilot, so you'll need to do that with the barbecue light. Once you've got a pilot burning, uh, push in on the knob for 10 to 15 seconds, 
uh, just for that flame sensor to heat up and once it's heated up uh, you can turn the oven up to temperature once you've finished using the oven you can turn it back down to pilot and leave the pilot burning or just turn it all the way off and relight it next time you need to use the oven microwave pv fireplace air conditioning and power outlets uh, are the uh, things that you need to be plugged into power to operate everything else uh, in the rv uh, basically should work off of the battery and 12 volt uh, power system uh, your stereo is right inside uh, the cabinet here so this is an am fm cd dvd bluetooth uh, USB and auxiliary inputs. Uh, it also has near field communication so if you have a phone uh, that uses NFC uh, you can just hold it up near the uh, uh, near the unit to pair your phone. Um, what else have we not covered in here? You should have a smoke detector somewhere. Uh, right here at the entry door is where you'll find your smoke detector. Um, important to note that this is on its own uh, 9 volt battery. It's not wired into the RV's electrical system. So make sure to check that battery periodically. And you have your propane leak detector down here. Uh, so this is wired into the RV's electrical system. It doesn't have its own battery and it will do three things. Uh, it will alert you to the potential of a propane leak, a carbon monoxide situation, or a low battery on the RV. Just like the smoke detector will chirp when its battery is getting low, this will do the same thing if your RV battery is very low. Here in the bathroom, um, not a lot to uh, talk about. Uh, but anytime you're using your RV's sewer system, uh, you want to make sure that you're using a good potent RV toilet chemical. Um, to add chemical, uh, just open up a package. Uh, chemical comes in powder, liquid, or tablet form. Uh, we sell all three in our parts and accessories department. Pour the chemical into the bowl. Push halfway down on the uh, foot pedal to fill the bowl with water. And then once it's full of water, push the rest of the way down to dump everything down into the tank. Um, it's important to note that the uh, chemical does take a little bit of water to activate it. So every time you put chemical into your black holding tank, you'll want to put some water down with it. You should add toilet chemical to the holding tank immediately after every time you dump that black holding tank. And here in the bedroom, You've got your, your uh, front uh, closet with the big sliding doors. Uh, when, anytime you're traveling, make sure these doors are latched in place. Uh, if they slide back and forth, uh, it doesn't take much to break the mirror. Here you've got your second TV location with uh, uh, TV antenna and satellite hookups. The red uh, button is for the TV antenna booster. Um, that is uh, uh, basically obsolete now where, where all of the uh, TV signal is digital. Uh, you shouldn't actually need to activate that booster uh, to get a TV signal. TV antenna cranks up from right here. Uh, again, you can crank the uh, TV antenna up on the roof. You can pull down on here to turn the antenna. Um, but uh, with the new digital signal, uh, that's not so important as it used to be. And you shouldn't actually need to turn it very much to uh, dial in your, your signal. Um, and uh, the location of your um, bypass valves for your hot water tank, um, you can access the back of that tank uh, from right here by removing these two panels. Uh, but this trailer, uh, as you'll recall, uh, also has the uh, bypass valve uh, accessible from the front storage compartment. I think for the most part that covers it. Hopefully you've learned something about the 2015 Grand Design Reflection 313 RLTS. If you have any questions, you can always get a hold of us here at Trailblazer uh, or you can check our website, trailblazerrv.com.
Thanks for watching.